Well, welcome. Um, I have some information today that I, that I think will be very useful in you being able to immediately go back to the office and implement um, some of these concepts. Um, I've been working with, with other administrators throughout the world on, on some of these concepts, and what I have found in 2019 is that most organizations do not have set up what I'm going to show you that's set up, and then we're going to move into beyond just monitoring Active Directory, we're going to move into um, a new concept called UBA, User Behavior Analytics, and how UBA can actually extend beyond what monitoring um, of Active Directory changes can do. Um, just to give you um, a little bit of information about me, um, my name is Derek Melber. Um, I am um, a technology evangelist for Manage Engine on the Active Directory team. Um, really what that means is I get the opportunity to tour the world. Um, this year alone I've been to 21 countries, um, travel quite extensively, and um, the great thing um, about all that is I get to meet other administrators um, throughout the world and, and get to see experiences on what other um, organizations and administrators are dealing with with regard to Active Directory. Um, to kind of point you to some resources um, after we're done here today so that you um, can take advantage of some things that we've put together, um, our website is full of some really good information. First of all, we have blogs. If you come here to our website under company, um, you'll see that you can get to our blogs here. Um, our blogs, um, we blog usually once a week, um, maybe twice a week. I've been writing for this blog for six years, so there's a lot of good information that's behind this blog. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up, must be the network. But, um, but what we did over the last month was we took these blogs and we decided to organize them in a different way that it's easier to um, find information and we built this Active Directory Academy. And this Active Directory Academy literally is less than two weeks old. Um, we don't even have a link to it off the website, so afterwards, if you want to come up and take a picture of the URL, you certainly can do that. Um, but the whole goal, as you can see here, we've organized information that's through our blogs um, from all the different aspects of Active Directory, make it searchable, um, and um, this is literally six to seven years of documentation and information all around Active Directory. Everything from security, group policy, replication, um, user creation, cleanup, automation, a, a whole variety of different concepts um, are on this page. So this is a um, brand new um, way that we're going to communicate um, with our customers and those that want information about Active Directory. Um, so those are some resources that are available to you. Um, also, I want to point out my email address. Please email me with any questions. Um, one of the things that, that I, I strive to do is answer emails, answer questions. I always encourage people to email me. Um, I just received my 15th MVP um, in June. I know a lot of other MVPs. I know a lot of people that work at Microsoft. So please take advantage of me as a resource, um, if at all possible, and um, I can get you solutions around group policy, active directory, security, um, all the different areas um, in your environments. So that's a little bit about me, a little bit about resources that are available to you, and now what I want to do is I want to jump into this idea of internal attacks. And what I have found throughout this year, um, as I go from, from city to city, is that administrators and organizations aren't taking advantage of SIM solutions that they currently have in place. They're not taking advantage of concepts that we all need to implement, and almost everyone has a technology to implement this, but we're not putting things in place. So what I want to do is I want to run through a couple of different concepts. First of all, I want to create a foundation. The foundation for why we need to actually monitor changes in Active Directory. And the reason is because we're being attacked successfully. Now, I'm going to start off by talking about this graphic here. This is a graphic from Microsoft. I acquired this about two years ago from Microsoft Ignite. And basically, this is Microsoft's view of an attack on Active Directory. 
So this isn't some third party talking about attacking Active Directory. This is Microsoft talking about attacking Active Directory. Now, the green is an unknown amount of time. This is basically when the attacker is gathering information about the organization. We don't know how much time they actually spend, but during this time they're going out and they're gathering information about the organization from the company website, from executives, social media pages. They're doing everything they can to gather information. And then they attack. And when they attack, the goal is to compromise at least one computer. Because according to Microsoft, once a single computer in your Active Directory domain has been compromised, it only takes two days to get domain admin credentials. Now, think about that. One computer, two days to get domain admin credentials. So we must protect atta from attacks. We, we must uh, protect. And if we start thinking about which computer is usually compromised first, of course, it's an endpoint. So we have to secure our endpoints. We have to start monitoring our endpoints. This is crucial for us to secure our environments. But what's sad, and what Microsoft and virtually every other security company out there has proven, is once an organization has been breached, it's taking organizations up to five months to realize that they were breached. 150 days, that number actually went up in 2019. According to the Security Hub, which monitors this on other attacks, and we're gonna look at one specifically, this number is increasing, it's not decreasing. What's happening is organizations aren't realizing that they were breached. So now, the company is breached, someone is in the organization for five months and they can do whatever they want during that time frame. Now, if we think that these numbers are skewed, if we think this is, you know, maybe this is some old information, let's look at a real world recent attack. This attack was just discovered a month ago, right? The Capital One breach. The Capital One breach, I did a little bit of research on this, and if you start looking at the details, this is the largest financial breach in history. It's the fifth largest breach of all different breaches, and it occurred this year. So the reality is organizations aren't doing what they need to do in order to realize that they're being attacked, in order to realize that they were attacked. During this particular breach, millions of, of social security numbers, bank numbers, millions were breached. So this is something that we have to worry about. And whether you're in finance or whatever it is, we have to worry about the data that is leaving our organization. And if we look at the details, you'll notice that the breach actually started in 2016. A lot of the numbers that are out there say that the breach started in 2019, but the breach actually started in 2016. And when we start looking at the overall lay of the land on what happened, if it weren't for someone like you that was on um, a, a social media page where the attacker posted that they had the information and you actually told Capital One that they were breached, Capital One still wouldn't know it. Because what happened was the attacker was out on a social media page just saying, I have this information, what do I do with it? Another administrator realized that and then told Capital One that they were breached. But from the beginning to the end, just this year alone, it was 120 days. But if we go back to 2016, obviously it was hundreds of days that Capital One didn't know that they were breached. So this is the type of thing that is going on today, and what I'm seeing is that even basic configurations organizations aren't dealing with. Now, what came out actually at the beginning of the month was it wasn't only Capital One that was breached. It's many different organizations. So what happened is the woman that breached Capital One also put code in to look at other organizations like Ford, Vodafone. At this point, no one knows all the companies that were breached. But the breach started with AWS, Amazon Web Services. All these companies had data and had servers at AWS, and this is where the breach started from. So we have to be aware of what's going on in our organizations. 
when, when you look at this particular breach, what happened was the woman went in, found a hole in a firewall, through the firewall, gave herself elevated privileges, and those elevated privileges is what allowed her to gain access to the information. So what I want to focus on is what should we do with regard to elevated privileges and monitoring of those elevated privileges within Active Directory. And what I want to do is I first of all want to start with SIM solutions and then I want to move into a new technology that SIMs have which is UBA, User Behavior Analytics. But when we start looking just at a basic SIM, let's look at some configurations that we can monitor that indicate 100% that we're under attack. So one of the things that I always try to focus on are false positives. What I'm going to show you today, none of these are false positives. So let's go in and let's look at local groups. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to look at this workstation here, okay? And I'm going to give you action items as we go through. What I'm going to suggest is when you get back to the office, I want you to pick 20 workstations. Randomly pick 20 workstations. And on those 20 workstations, I want you to go into the local SAM, the Security Accounts Manager, on those machines. Let's actually log on as an admin so I can see it a little bit easier. So I'm going to log on here as an admin. And I want you to go on those 20 machines to the local SAM and to the administrator's group on those machines. So we're going to come in here, go to the local SAM, and we're going to look at the administrator's group. Now, everyone has an opinion of who should be in the local administrator's group on your workstations, but in my opinion, it should be very, very slim. Minimum, domain admins and the local administrator. Okay, Users should not be in here. Other random groups should not be in here. And you may think, it's not a problem. I am certain that the local administrators group on my workstations are configured properly. That's why you're going to pick 20 and you're just going to sample. And I want you to go in and I want you to see who actually has membership in the local administrators group. I think you're going to be shocked when you go look at the local administrators group. You're going to see random users. You're going to see random groups on at least a couple of those 20 machines. And if we go back to the graphic from Microsoft, if this machine is one of those machines that's compromised, no wonder it only takes 48 hours to get domain admin credentials because we're not securing our endpoints in the proper way. Now, think about this in a couple of different ways. One, if a user on their workstation is a local administrator, they log on and they go to the internet. What level of access does the internet have back on that machine? Administrator. So now the internet has administrative credentials on that machine. Now that they have administrator's credentials on that machine, they're going to go in and they're going to take advantage of all the, the recent hacks that are going on in Microsoft world. Pass the hash, pass the ticket. They're going to move laterally and upward through the environment. Two days, their domain and admin credentials. These are things we have to worry about. Now, if we go in and we secure our workstations, and I don't want to eliminate servers, because really servers are our endpoints as well. So we're going to look at servers and we're going to look at workstations. If we know that the local administrators group is reduced to only domain admins and only the local administrator, how often should the local administrators group change membership? Almost never. So how about now we go in and we monitor our workstations so that we can actually see if our local machines have group membership changes. So now I can come in here and I can, in real time, determine if anyone is modifying the local administrators group on my workstations and servers. The whole purpose of monitoring is so you don't have to look at reports, so you don't have to generate reports. 
The idea is that you have a SIM solution that's doing the monitoring for you. If the local administrators group changes on any workstation or any server, you should get a text message or an email in real time telling you that. If you know that it shouldn't change and it changed, what does that indicate about that machine? It's under attack. It's pretty clear. So let the system do the work for you. And we cannot forget about these local machines, okay? Now, we also can't forget about the groups in Active Directory. How many of you are Active Directory admins? Okay, of the people that raised your hand, how many of you right now have 100% confidence of the membership of the domain admin group in your domain? Before you raise your hand, you aren't the only one that can change the membership of domain admins. Someone else can change the membership. And where are they right now? They're not here. They're at the office. And I don't know why, but they just took the CEO and added the CEO to domain admins. I don't know why. You don't know why. They just did it. Right this second, how many of you are notified of that? Okay, I get this around the world, okay? The domain admins group is not being monitored. We need to know. If you're an attacker and you have membership in the domain admins group for five minutes, is that enough time to do damage? Of course it is. So if you're not monitoring, how long are they in the group? According to all the numbers, five months. Okay? But watch this. If I simply have a system in place that allows me to monitor these changes, I now in real time, can be notified that these things are occurring. Real time. I have a real time. Your, your phone is vibrating right now, telling you that domain admins changed. But you need to do it for every privileged group. Go through, list all the privileged groups, put them in your SIM solution, and let the SIM monitor it for you. Okay? But a SIM can go beyond that. A SIM can also help with logons. Okay? You're here, right? Is there anyone not here? Okay, you're, you're okay. You're all here, all right? If your phone were to vibrate and you receive an email right now that says that your user account had a failed logon back at the office, what does that mean? If you have a failed logon for your account back at the office and you're here, what does that mean? You're under attack. How many of you monitor that? I got one. Everyone should raise your hand. It's simple. It's super simple. These are things that we can monitor that give us a 100% indication that we're under attack. But what I'm noticing is, is most admins aren't doing it. So let's not worry about the, the rocket science configurations. Let's worry about the basics because these are what attackers are going after, right? I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm working on some other concepts that, that I want everyone to think about daily. Who can get a list of the domain admins in your organization? Who can get a list of the members of domain admins in your organization? What's that? Every user. So if I can get a list of the domain admins, which accounts am I going to attack? The domain admins. Monitor all the domain admins for failed logons. We, we need to be able to look at this. And this is what a SIM solution can help us do, okay? So we need to look at groups. They are a clear indication of an attack. We need to look at failed logons, a clear indication of attack. We need to look for service accounts, right? Because I can get a listing of service accounts just like I can get a listing of domain admins. I was reading this morning an article that was posted on LinkedIn about Kerber roasting. And Kerber roasting is the idea that users get a list of all the users and the hashes and they go after service accounts. It's not only service accounts, it's all privileged accounts. The concept is I'm going to use a password spray attack. We're going to look at that in just a minute. 
But what I want you to have set up is any time that you have your service accounts modified in any way, right? Here are my service accounts. If someone goes in and they modify a service account, they reset the password, they disable the account. First of all, how big of a problem is that for you as an admin? If someone randomly modifies a service account, is that a problem for you? Yes. How are you notified today that that happened? Who calls you? The user calls you, okay? How, how friendly is that conversation? It's not very friendly at all, right? You get a little frustrated because the user says, my app isn't working. And you're like, which app? I don't know, the one there, the one I clicked, right? I mean, the user has no idea, so you have to go in troubleshooting mode. But if someone were to go in and modify this, again, watch how quick this occurs, I now am monitoring this and I am notified of that change in real time. You get an email or a text message in real time. These are things that we must set up so that we know that changes are occurring. These are simple configurations that allow us to see and be notified of these critical changes that are occurring. And again, how often do your service accounts change? Not very often. So if they do change, one, you're most likely under attack, and two, you need to fix whatever changed to make sure that things are running again. But one of the things that, that I have found that's a problem is Sim Solutions do a really bad job at monitoring allowed attackers. What's an allowed attacker? I'm going to give you two examples. Example one, an allowed attacker would be someone, let's say, in finance. They've been working for the company for years. When they were hired, you were instructed to put them in the finance group. Even though they work for accounts payable, you were told to put them in the finance group. Because they're in the finance group, they not only have access to accounts payable, they have access to accounts receivable. But they shouldn't have access to accounts receivable. If I have access to accounts receivable through finance, can't I access that information? Of course. And every admin knows this happens every day. That is an allowed attacker. Real world example, he was in the news last week. Jeffrey Snowden. Jeffrey Snowden was an allowed attacker. Jeffrey Snowden did not hack into anything. Jeffrey Snowden went to information that he had access to, took it, and then used it. Okay? Another type of allowed attacker. Okay? Many of you work or have worked with admins that maybe shouldn't be an admin, if you know what I mean. Okay? I mean, we've all worked with someone that never should be an admin. And you don't want them to do admin work, but guess what group they're in? The domain admins, right? They are an allowed attacker. They are someone that can go in. They could run a PowerShell script that would blow up Active Directory because they have the capabilities to do that. So these are types of users that we don't know what they're doing. Whether it be malicious, whether it be accidental, we don't know what they're doing. And a SIM solution has a really tough time tracking these types of users. So let's talk about an example kind of merging these concepts together of an internal attack which a SIM solution has a really tough time tracking, okay? So we just talked about who can get memberships of domain admins. So if every user can get every domain admin, can't every user get a list of every user account? Every user can get a list of every user account in Active Directory. Now, what I want to do, now that I have that list as the attacker, is I want to use a password against every single one of them, trying to at least find one account with that password. What's that attack known as? That attack is known as a password spray attack. This was two months ago, a posting on LinkedIn on exactly how to do that, okay? It's a password spray attack. How many of you have your SIM set up to you to receive an email if any user fails to log on? 
None of you. You know how many emails you would get? You would get so many emails. That's why this attack is so successful. Because no SIM solution is gonna tell you when a user fails to log on once. But what if the user has a program running to log on every user one time? And when they log on with the password, they know what the password is for the user. That's a password spray attack, right? But UBA, User Behavior Analytics, now has the ability to see that. Over here inside of a SIM, and UBA is nothing more than an extension to a SIM. That's it. It takes your existing SIM information and analyzes it. And right here, you will see that in the last six months, I had a password spray attack. This is what the system told me. Well, it did. That's interesting. Where did my data go? Huh. My data disappeared. Let's see if I can get to it through another way. Hmm. Well, my data's gone. So you will see here that UBA is looking for certain numbers. So I had 10 plus logon failures from a machine. The data shows the same machine, the time frame is within less than a minute, and all the different usernames that are being used. It is a clear 100% indication of an attack. There is no way that the user of that machine can tell you, I accidentally typed in all these other names. There's no way. It is a clear indication of an attack, and it is the number one attack today that's going on in Azure Active Directory. It's happening right now on tenants around the world because they're live on the internet and people are trying to get into the accounts. But UBA, user behavior analytics, is evaluating the data in your SIM solution in a radically different way. And what it's finding are anomalies, things that are not usually happening and it's indicating you on things that are not exactly happening all the time. So the other areas that UBA can help with, for example, log on times, log on failures, um, usual host access, so if I log on to a different computer, remote access, access to data, very similar to DLP, right? So it, it's, it's verging on DLP, but it does something that DLP can't do, okay? So these are the areas that UBA really has a strength in. And the concepts around UBA are growing every single day. And in my opinion, what we need to do is we need to add UBA, we need to add analytics to our SIM solutions so now we can see totally different concepts that are going on in our environments, okay? So in this short time, we ran through the reason why we need to look at these changes. We showed you some different things that you absolutely need to look at. Group changes on the local machine, on your workstations, as well as in Active Directory. You need to start looking at logon failures for your own account, for all privileged users. We looked at service accounts, and then also we looked at how UBA is a clear indicator of an attack. So hopefully these things, if nothing else, get you thinking um, obviously, um, the solutions that I showed you today, the SIM solutions, were from Manage Engine. Um, AD Audit was the tool that we're using. Um, AD Audit has uh, it, it basically download, install, configure, and get a report in less than 30 minutes. It is a super easy install, but it's extremely powerful. Okay? If you have any questions, I'm over um, in the Manage Engine booth and um, would love to talk to you. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.